Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and LittleShaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about the act that narcissists put on. This act can look like different things for different people or at different times, but honestly these differences are really just variations on a theme. The reality is that virtually all narcissists are putting on the same act in the sense that they're all pretending to be like everybody else in some form or another, and that's what we're going to talk about today. For all that we hear about narcissists being such superb actors and such master manipulators, in practical terms, this doesn't seem to be the case for many of them. Certainly, there are better manipulators than people who are not manipulators at all, but that's not really saying a lot, and most of that is actually down to simple practice. These people have a long history of doing this kind of thing, and they know what works. However, they're not necessarily conscious of how something works or why it works, which is why when something doesn't work, you very often see them continue to keep trying to do it anyway. It's more of a habit or a conditioned behavior in this way than it is a planned out plot or a thought out scheme. If there was that much thought being put into it, they would realize when it's not working and try something else, but a large majority of them do not. The act they put on is no different. They do it because this is what they do. An alligator doesn't plan to look and behave like a floating log. This is just what they do. It's what works for their particular skill sets and their abilities, their sort of level of evolution, if you will. In a very real way, the way that narcissists function is exactly the same. The way that everybody functions is the same in that regard, really, just as some people have a more limited range of skill sets and abilities. If you can reason and communicate and do for yourself to accomplish what you need to accomplish in order to get through life, then you will. If you can't do those things, you will do something else in order to accomplish what you need to accomplish. It's that simple. This is what the Narcissistic Personalities Act really is, them doing something else. These personalities are pretty limited in terms of functionality, processing, and in a lot of other areas. Many of the things that other people do to live in this world, narcissists can't actually do. They can't bond, they can't trust, they can't communicate, they can't fulfill their own needs or even identify them. So they do something else. They pretend that they can do those things. It sounds kind of pathetic when you just say it right out loud like that, but it actually serves them well a lot of the time. Most people don't look much deeper into things, and if there's no scrutiny, the narcissist act actually holds up pretty well. If people do start looking more closely, though, that's when it starts to fall apart. It's kind of like wearing a disguise. From a distance, or if you just glance over really quickly, a person wearing a disguise will probably fool you. Up close, however, a person wearing a disguise just looks like a person wearing a disguise. You might not be able to tell what they really look like, but you can tell they don't look like that. You can tell there's something wrong with this picture. Or maybe like if somebody was pretending to be a doctor. And not somebody who has all of the education but no license to practice medicine. We're talking about someone who is literally pretending to be a doctor based solely on how they've seen doctors act and what they think doctors should be like. They might fool some people in some situations, but as soon as anybody with even a basic rudimentary knowledge of anything about medicine started asking questions, it would become very obvious that this person is not a doctor. Part of the reason narcissists are able to get away with such blatant lies, like pretending to be a doctor or pretending to not be married or going to school for years when they're really not or being wealthy when they aren't, and all of the other lies that this kind of personality is notorious for telling is that most people don't seriously consider that somebody is going to lie about something so fundamental and so obvious. Their act, even if it's not something as dramatic as pretending to be a doctor, is no different. It's a lie about things so fundamental and so easy to see through that people actually don't see through it because they don't look. It's too big and too fundamental to see. Kind of like not knowing that the mountain you're standing on is a sleeping dinosaur until it starts to get up. The thing is too, as unbelievable as it seems, even when people know this, they still don't understand how deep this actually goes. Even when people understand that the narcissist is putting on an act, they often don't realize how much of an act it really is. A true narcissist is more than just a person who's pretending to care in a relationship in order to get something or a person who's pretending to be a loving parent when other people are around. A true narcissist is a person who does not really understand how to function, manage, or get along in life at all. 
even basic conversations are high stakes, high pressure situations for the true narcissist. Inside, they are perpetually lost and confused, unsure of how to act or what to say, and never knowing if what they're doing or saying is the right thing or not. If you pay attention to them, you can actually see that, and once you know what you're looking for, you will not be able to understand how you ever could have missed it. It is that obvious. But only when you know, only when you really look. Many people believe the narcissists act that they're so together or confident or valuable or amazing or whatever. They believe the narcissist is altruistic or a hero or a victim. They believe the narcissist is so powerful or so helpless. Of course they believe it. The narcissist needs them to believe it so that they themselves can believe it. This means they work very hard at performing it. It's their version of an identity and it's very likely they believe that everybody else is doing the same thing. The problem for them is that their behavior contradicts their words completely. These are not the actions of people who believe that they are worth anything, let alone worth so much more than everybody else. This is an act. It's an overcompensation for believing they have no value or worth at all, and whether the persona is a bully, or a superstar, or a victim, or a hero, it's all the same. This is the identity that the narcissist learned would be valued by others in whatever context that word has for them and would thus get them what they need, so that's what they pretend to be. For many, it probably isn't even pretending in the classic sense because that word implies a purposeful intent to be phony. Narcissists may believe the persona they portray is who they really are despite the fact that they're aware they are trying to hide things. Rather than a calculated and purposeful attempt to be something that they know they're not, it's more likely that for many narcissists, this is who they want to be for whatever reason, think they need to be, or have tried to convince themselves that they really are because to be themselves is not acceptable. So they came up with some sort of identification narrative during their early socialization experiences, and this is the role they live out to the best of their abilities, which usually isn't very well, to be honest. Much of their behavior contradicts it, and people do notice that eventually. Because their behavior often directly contradicts the identity narrative put forth by the narcissist, people very understandably feel that they've been lied to and tricked by the narcissist. They are left angry and hurt that somebody that they trusted is not who they said they were. The reality is these people are actually nobody. They're just walking around trying to hide what they think they really are so they can survive without being rejected and abandoned by the rest of the human herd. Avoiding rejection and abandonment at all costs is not just evidence of an unaddressed childhood wound, for example. It's a survival instinct going back to the days when our ancestors were cavemen. There is safety in numbers, as the saying goes. Being rejected and abandoned by the group equals death. People will automatically do anything they can to avoid this as a matter of survival, and if you have no skills with which to prevent it, then your brain will do whatever it can, including pretending to have those skills or imitating them. This can be hard for people to understand, but only because people are looking at it through their own eyes. It would be difficult for you to pretend to be something you're not, but that's because you don't usually go around doing that. You don't need to. This is what these particular personalities do, and in some ways it's no more difficult for them than it is for you to just walk around being who you are. It requires no more planning or knowledge or anything else. They do this as a matter of course, because it's what they do. In the absence of a true identity and the skills necessary to avoid rejection from the group, this is the workaround that their brain came up with in order to function, and it works the same way everyone else's brain does in that respect, automatically. In other ways, though, it's a lot harder for them. Not because they have to consciously try to plan out a fake identity. As we discussed earlier, they may believe this is their real identity, even though they know they're hiding things. It's harder because they're constantly afraid of exposure. Though they may believe their persona is who they really are, most narcissists know they are hiding something. They believe they have a bad side or another side to themselves that people would reject if they saw it. The way this is often expressed in the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of split personality dynamic is evidence of that. Non-psychopathic narcissists struggle greatly with shame, so they generally find any negative qualities or emotions within themselves so disturbing and uncomfortable that they disown them, distancing themselves from these things entirely. When the things come out, as they will because they're part of the narcissist, the same way that everyone's perceived flaws, emotions, and negative qualities are parts of them, the narcissistic personality insists that these things are not representative of who they are, disowning them even more. Of course, this is ridiculous. These things are part of what makes up the narcissist the same way they're a part of everybody. But because of their toxic shame, narcissistic personalities cannot tolerate this being true. They have to deny it. They have to distance themselves from it. They have to protect their belief that they are a good, 
worthy, and valuable person, which means no flaws, no mistakes, no negative anything. This super rigid standard of what makes somebody a quote unquote good person is ridiculously unreasonable and unrealistic, creating a very large split between who they are and who they want to be or think they need to be if they want to have value or worth so they won't be rejected. It's quite a contradiction. They may interpret this contradiction along the lines of something like, well, but that's not me. I'm not the kind of person who would do something like that, even though they very clearly are the kind of person who would do something like that because they did it. These disowned parts, having been pushed away and disavowed, are then subsequently allowed to exist unchecked and unacknowledged, often resulting in them becoming disproportionate and out of control. This makes them even more disturbing and even more uncomfortable for the narcissist, which means they try even harder to suppress, hide, deny, and refuse to acknowledge them. And so it goes, becoming more and more and more of a problem and ramping up the narcissist's anxiety more and more and more around the fear that someone is going to somehow find out about these awful secret flaws and reject them because of it. Their experiences only serve to reinforce this fear because when people do see their flaws or mistake, all of these disowned parts suddenly leap into view and it's so different from their previous persona that it's like a different person has suddenly shown up. This can be shocking for people and their reaction is perceived as rejection by the narcissist. And really, it is a rejection. In their desperation to hide and deny these quote-unquote bad parts of themselves, the narcissist has neither addressed nor even acknowledged them at all. These parts have been allowed to exist, ignored, and basically completely unchecked in any way. When they inevitably make their appearance, they can be shocking, even monstrous, due to how completely and constantly repressed they are, and people are often totally unprepared for it. The narcissist fears rejection from other people because, in a very real way, they've rejected themselves. It's like narcissists have a bear in their house, and instead of trying to get rid of it, they just pretend it's not there. Eventually, people are going to run into it. It's even worse than that, too, because since the narcissist is in complete denial that the bear is there at all, they don't even warn you. They don't even tell you to watch out for it. You just happen upon it yourself. Of course, you run away because there's a freaking bear in there. And this just reinforces to the narcissist that they need to continue to reject and repress and deny this side of themselves even more instead of realizing that doing that is what's causing the problem. You can see then that the act that they're putting on, though in some ways natural and completely automatic for them due to the workaround strategies their brain has had to come up with, would be very important for them to keep up and how much energy goes into trying to deny and reject anything negative about themselves and to perform this act for people. In some ways it's part of the narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is often misunderstood. Yes, it refers to attention, which supplies a narcissistic personality with validation that they exist, that they matter, that they have power, etc. But it also does something else, something extremely important. The way it works is this. Narcissistic personality has no stable identity, self-image, and no ability to manufacture self-worth. This is the core inability of this personality. It's their most fundamental problem. Narcissistic personality has an identity narrative they'd like to believe in, but can't because of the problem with no identity, no ability to create self-worth. This identity narrative can be hero, victim, martyr, a successful person, a rich person, whatever, right? The narcissistic personality needs other people to perform this identity for because then those people will reflect or mirror this identity back to the narcissist as if it were real. The narcissist can believe in it too when that happens. They need others to quote unquote supply their experiences of self-worth and identity. It is the only way they can have that experience. The narcissistic personality does achieve this for a short period of time, but all those disowned parts start to shine through. Their disorder shines through. Then the narcissistic personality needs new people to perform for because the old people are not reflecting the same image back to the narcissist anymore, which attacks the narcissist's unstable identity at its core and leads to destabilizing, debilitating, toxic shame. And so on and so on and so on that the cycle repeats. They have a lot of practice performing this identity for a lot of different people. Consequently, many people believe the narcissist act. It's easy to be fooled by it because it's so consistent. But one of the big reasons that it is so consistent is because the lack of self-worth and identity that it's a reaction to are so consistent. That never goes away and it always needs to be counteracted. It's the narcissist endlessly saying to everyone around them, but most of all to themselves, any negative stuff 
is not me. That's not really who I really am. I have no negative qualities or behavior. I'm perfect and therefore I have value. So don't think that that's not true. Don't think I'm worthless or unimportant. Don't reject me. People sometimes wonder how it's possible, for example, that narcissists are so self-absorbed and so self-focused and so entitled but have no self-worth. Doesn't entitlement and egocentricity prove they care about themselves and think they're valuable? The answer is no, it does not. Narcissists are egocentric and self-important, but these things do not equate to self-worth. Those things are not synonyms. In fact, part of the reason they are egocentric and self-important in the first place is because they're afraid they're not important to anybody else. That's why they constantly insist that people need to pay attention to them and fulfill their needs and do what they want. It's also why they rage and break down and leave when these things don't happen. To a narcissist, that's proof that they don't matter and they have no way to counteract that at all. The only way they have to experience feelings of worth or value is through the constant reactions and reinforcement of other people. And because they engage in rigid black and white thinking, if they're not the most important thing, this means they don't matter at all. This is one of the big reasons why they don't believe anybody cares about them, for example. They can never be made to feel important enough that they could believe that's actually true. It's a sad irony that this can never happen, largely in part because they simply don't believe in anything positive that they're given or shown. But even if they did, it wouldn't matter. The requirement is they must be treated as more important than everything and everybody at all times, and it's just not even possible to do that. Even if it was possible and you did do it, it still wouldn't matter because they still wouldn't believe that you feel that way. Yeah, you did it, but do you really feel that way? They want something that it's just not possible to give them, and because they're so challenged and so limited in so many areas, they just don't seem to recognize that. They go around believing that it's everyone else's job to convince them of how they should feel about themselves, and when nobody can convince them that they matter or that they have value, because nobody can do that, because it's impossible to make somebody believe something they just flat out don't think is true, they're blamed and punished by the narcissist for failing. Narcissists enjoy being flattered and supported and put on a pedestal, but they don't really believe in good things said about them or done for them. They really only believe in things that are negative or mean. They like to hear positive stuff, but they don't believe it. The closest they could get is that they might believe you believe any positive things that you're saying about them. They just think that you're wrong. Most of the time, they don't even believe that you believe it. This is why people are so often accused of lying or being manipulative when they're trying to be kind or complimentary toward narcissists in their lives. This can get even worse, too, because the narcissists often insist that the reason they don't believe you is your fault somehow. It's because of you or something you said or didn't say or something you did or didn't do. They want you to somehow make them believe you or to convince them, which, of course, you cannot do. It's an absolutely unwinnable situation that there is zero point in participating in because they're not capable of trusting you or their own discernment enough to believe anyone means anything said about them unless it's bad. Part of the reason for this is because, don't forget, they know something you don't. Behind the act that they're putting on is an unlovable pile of human garbage, toxic waste that people would run screaming from if they saw it, like so dramatic, right? So they'll never believe you care about them because this is what they think about themselves, yet they can't tolerate the idea that you don't care about them because this shames them. If people reject you and don't care about you, you're bad. You're worthless. That's how they think. This is why they blame you for it. They're unable to deal with the shame of this, but they're also unable to see it any other way, so they have to blame it on somebody. This is often framed then as an attack on the other person, but what the narcissist is really saying over and over again is, there's no possible way anybody could think anything good about me or care about me at all, so you're lying or you're just stupid. Their self-loathing is very deep and colors a large amount of their reactions, thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors, but it's also often unconscious. Remember, these people don't do negative anything, and that especially includes negative or painful emotions like self-loathing. Even if the self-loathing never slips through into their consciousness, we can see it in their behavior because this kind of thing always comes through somehow. It's too big to hide. Narcissists often shame, mock, attack, or demean people for caring about them, for example. And though this is almost monstrously horrible to do to somebody, consider what it actually means. Think about it. When someone says that they like you and thinks that you're smart or you're funny or whatever, do you just automatically assume they're lying because you're actually not smart or funny? Do you just automatically assume people are lying and don't really like you because it's just not possible that anybody would like you? Of course not. 
but these people do. And it isn't just when they've screwed people over. This is actually one of the first things that starts to show up in relationships with narcissists. Their inability to believe anyone actually likes or cares about them, which often comes out as accusations, paranoia, and distrust. Essentially, the narcissist is saying that they believe they are so wretched and so loathsome that if you insist that you care about them, something must be seriously wrong with you. Their self-loathing is auto-corrected into projection here and is translated into that you deserve to be used, duped, cheated, or mistreated because if you actually care about such a worthless pile of human garbage, you're obviously just too stupid to be valuable. And you're probably just lying anyway because nobody could really care about anyone else and especially no one can care about them. This whole thing is about the narcissist and their delusionally negative feelings for themselves, just like everything else that has to do with these personalities always is. That's why we encourage, why we insist, really, that you not take this horrible BS personally. Because it's not personal. It's not about you at all. In point of fact, it has absolutely nothing to do with you in any way. You're a convenient target. They try to make it about you because they can't deal with the true reality of their feelings, but they will absolutely tell on themselves every single time if you can look past the crude, childish misdirection at what they are really saying. That's the moral of the story here when it comes to the narcissist act and every other thing about them. These people are an illusion. If you want to know the reality of the situation, look past the misdirection and see what you see. When you're dealing with a narcissist, chances are it will be the exact opposite of where they are trying to point you. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype worldwide. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. We have opened up subscriptions to the YouTube channel, so if you're interested in finding out what perks will come with that, you can check that out. I teach workshops, seminars, and clinics throughout the year, so if you'd like to see what we're running this month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. And if you're interested in joining our support group with twice-weekly support meetings, access to exclusive content, and more, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day.